Hi there, I wanna welcome you back to my channel. This is my best of 2022 cleaning videos for my channel. This year I posted less than I have in previous years and um, part of that's due to personal circumstances. I know a lot of us went through different things or had losses in our life, but I just wanna come back strong for 2023 with some great cleaning motivation. So I wanna invite you to join me for this one. I know that you will walk away motivated to jump into 2023 well with your house clean and organized and keeping those routines strong. So let's get ready for this one. <laughs> Hi there friends, after a little bit of time, I wanted to welcome you back to my channel for another cleaning video. Today, I just need to tidy up my home. You can see that we've been playing, lounging around, and also left quite a mess in the kitchen. So those are the three areas that we're gonna tackle today. I hope this gives you some much needed inspiration or motivation for keeping your house clean and tidy. Let's get it all done together. Next, I have a little YouTube magic for you, tidying up the living room. Let me know what you think about this. So now we made it to the big mess of the video, the kitchen. We had just had lunch and this morning we had been doing all kinds of projects. We had the iron out because we were doing some iron on transfers that we made on the Cricut and we just had not really cleaned up after ourselves. So it's time to take that cleanup break that we so need in the middle of our day and get things back in order. So as I went around the room, I was really starting by putting dishes in the sink and putting trash in the trash can. Uh, after that, I just picked up the things that need to be put away and having the counters cleared, then it's time to tackle that big pile of dishes. So I just started with a little bit of soap. My dishwasher was already loaded and running from the morning. Uh, I realized it was pretty much full and there wasn't room for these dishes. So as I started running that, I just washed all of these by hand and um, it makes me very thankful that I have a dishwasher now. We haven't had a dishwasher for a long time. Uh, I would say over 10 years and we just got one last year. So I am still very much enjoying having a dishwasher. Uh, our kids do take turns with washing dishes and I appreciate that. I think it's a great skill for them to learn and also take turns with. I have six children if you're new to my channel. So it's not like the same person has to do dishes every day, but we definitely take turns with it. Now this is my little cleaning hack that I want to try. I just used some of our regular coarse salt and some lemon juice and then I had a lime cut for my lunch so I gave it a scrub. I know I have seen this cleaning hack everywhere and I hoped it would take the stain off of my cutting board but as you can see it did not really make a change at all. My best hack for the cutting board is to run it through the dishwasher. You know especially those plastic cutting boards they do get stained when you cut really um, colorful things. Sometimes I'll cut carrots or I think that was what the stain was on there then. Even red peppers or darker vegetables like that will leave their color behind, so that's okay. I do have some wood cutting boards that we use sometimes, but I like to use those plastic cutting boards and just keep them close by. I have two of them that I rotate between, and I guess it's just a fact of life that they do get stained from time to time. Now I'll let you listen to a little bit of music while I finish up these silverware. I will interrupt for just a minute to say that I'm using the On Guard Cleaner uh, Concentrate diluted in that water bottle to clean my countertops. I absolutely love using that. It's probably my favorite thing I've used for the countertops and the table, just the kitchen area. I like that it is um, not a harsh chemical that is gonna kind of 
be something that I wouldn't want our food to be exposed to. Uh, so I used that to clean off the countertop and then I wanted to point out these beautiful flowers. It's so nice to have fresh flowers in the house. Uh, the other day when we were out, my husband grabbed this little bouquet of just sunflowers and I popped it in a little mason jar there on the counter. It brought such a freshness to the room. I love seeing that. And then I went and put some of our fruit in a bowl. We have these prickly pears and actually later this day we turned those into some agua fresca, prickly pear juice. So that was a lot of fun. Thanks so much for joining me for this one and I hope that this gives you some inspiration for the homemaking that you need to do and maybe tidying up in the middle or at the end of your day. I'll see you in the next one. God bless you. Bye. Welcome back to my channel. Today we need to get the house back in order after a little bit of relaxing and hanging out and with 10 people in the house, that ends up meaning there are messes to clean up. So I'm glad you joined me for this one. If you need some motivation for getting your house clean and back in order, this is the place to be. So let's get started. So welcome back to another fabulous day in our home. Yes, we make big messes, but we clean them up and I have a couple people working with me behind the scenes today. Those would be my children. And so you won't see them in this video, but I promise they are helping. Some of the jobs that you might wonder, how did that get done? Well, it was probably done by some helpful hands that yes, they're required to help uh, clean up. They live here, so they're part of making the messes and the cleanup jobs. So I just started by clearing this kitchen counter and um, it definitely felt like an overwhelming mess. I think whenever everything is scattered everywhere, it's that, oh my goodness, where do I even start? Well, I decided to start in the messiest room and that's usually what I do because when the messiest room is back in order, it definitely gives you a little bit of momentum to get the rest of the house done. So once I got all the dishes piled up in the kitchen and sink, I just uh, started tackling those. And I did make myself a bowl of soapy water so that as I was loading the dishwasher, I could also hand wash the things that need to be hand washed. I usually like the kitchen to be a little bit more organized and today it just wasn't. It was just piled up, everything mixed together. Those big pans, I'm not gonna throw them in the dishwasher, so I scrubbed them by hand, and then I loaded cups and plates and those kind of things into the dishwasher. And I'm so thankful to have a dishwasher, let me tell you, um, for many, many years, probably well over 10 years, we didn't have a dishwasher, and we've had this one for about a year, so I'm super thankful for it, and I love using it personally, but my children do help with the dishes most the time after most every meal.
Real quick while I am loading my dishwasher, I wanna encourage you to hop up and do some kind of cleaning job around your house too. It might be loading or unloading your dishwasher or it might be just straightening up your room or the living room, but I promise you that sense of satisfaction when the video is over will be yours if you can look around your house and see that you've made some improvements also. So I invite you to join with me in some cleanup tasks today. love having this little stove area totally clean and wiped down it's so satisfying and then i went ahead and started the dishwasher i've been using this um, cascade gel i've also used like the powder in the box i rarely buy the dishwasher tabs because i just feel like they're probably not as good of a deal what do you do um, on that like are you frugal conscious when buying your dishwashing detergent or um, do you just buy what's easiest I have definitely gotten some of those dishwasher tabs on a, um, a sale where they were like very reduced if you bought some them in conjunction with something else and so I went ahead and did that and tried them out I loved them they were easy and it kept things simple for my kids the older kids will start the dishwasher sometimes and they didn't overfill or underfill you know they just use one little tab so what do you think about that um I would love some tips since I am new to the dishwasher game all right now I've said dishwasher enough so let's move on to a different topic so I went ahead and wiped down the countertops and um just got everything nice and clean. I really like using my Thieves spray. That's what I had in the glass bottle. That's what I was using um, over on the uh, stove area. And that's probably my favorite spray to use in the kitchen just because I know that it is safe to use around food. And that definitely leaves me feeling really good about you know what my family's being exposed to. I tend to be a little more conscious about using more natural products and less harsh chemicals, especially where we're gonna be touching. Now real quick, I am clearing the clutter off the table. Some of this is just clutter, but a good portion of it was stuff out of our snack bag from our trip that we just got back from. So I was gathering those snacks up and they did get put away in our snack jar. We have a big snack jar kind of on the um, inside edge of the countertop and it's just a big oversized clear glass jar. I think I got it for Walmart, from Walmart for like $8 and something. It's the largest size they have. And we typically just feel, fill it up with things that are easy to um, have for a snack. Like we have instant oatmeal, but we also have things like granola bars or small packs of crackers. They're just things that we have gathered over time and there's a mix in there and the kids eat through them. Sometimes they'll eat them down really quickly and sometimes things will linger in there. I can kind of judge off of that which are the favorites and which we should replace. as fly lady says is one task that i love to finish the kitchen with it definitely makes the kitchen feel like it's done and cleaned and it just feels so good to have um, the sink shining so i totally see that why that's one of fly lady's tips i don't know if you've ever followed her but for years and years i would get her emails and kind of take her encouragement on 
just homemaking and keeping the house running smoothly. I love some of her tips and I still very much apply them today. As you can see, I'm wearing my shoes, which when I need to get busy and really stick with it till the job is done, I will put on a pair of shoes. And it's not something that I follow 100% of the time. Uh, I love lounging around the house and I don't mind running outside either barefoot or in flip flops that are by the door. But when I want to stay focused, I am either wearing shoes or an apron. Both of those things really give me the signal, stick with it till the end, don't give up. And so I was just finishing up the table here and having the kitchen and dining room kind of tackled at the same time is such a relief. ask me how is it living with your in-laws and I love it because my in-laws are so thoughtful they love the Lord and they're always thinking of us so my mother-in-law had to go to the grocery store and she offered to bring me a few things and since we just got back from a trip I told her yes we definitely need milk and eggs and just the basics and so I did tell her a couple of vegetables we wanted but she picked up even more than that and even brought back a surprise for the kids so let me show you real quick what she brought for me so in the back, we have um, a bag of zucchini and some cucumbers. She brought almond milk, regular milk, a roll of ground beef and ground turkey, um, a few bunches of bananas, and we'll definitely go through that. And then there's a bag of apples for the kids. This is cabbage, which we love and we'll eat a lot, onions. There's Kerrygold butter, my favorite ham for the kids for sandwiches and this was the big surprise neapolitan ice cream i know they'll love that there's a couple um, heads of romaine lettuce carrots a 10 pound bag of chicken leg quarters and a couple loaves of bread so that will definitely get us through and i'm so thankful that she's always thinking of us did just take a few minutes to wipe down the refrigerator. This wasn't really a deep clean of the refrigerator, but it did have some stickiness on the shelves and needed a thorough wipe down. So I just got a bowl of hot soapy water and gave everything a wipe and a dry. And now I can put away my groceries in a reasonably clean refrigerator. I love having a clean refrigerator. Like it's very important to me and I know it's hidden to most people, but if I know the refrigerator is a mess, I feel really disorganized and out of order and concerned that we're gonna have things going bad and getting missed. So usually weekly I'll wipe down the refrigerator. If not, then at least every time I go grocery shopping. So since I had these wonderful surprise groceries to put away, I decided that I better give the refrigerator a quick wipe down before I added them to what was quite a mess.
kitchen and dining room are really done. It feels so good to have this space clean. I just wiped down with a little bit of my Thieves cleaner from that glass bottle. I got that bottle, spray bottle from Walmart. Um, I thought that was a really good find. I think it was $4 or $4.50. Uh, I love it and I've been using it and also the kids have the signal. This one stays in the kitchen, so that's been really helpful to me. The living room wasn't too much of a mess at all. After picking up some things that were just laying around and fluffing the pillows back up, I just needed to quickly vacuum and this area was pretty much straightened up. I'm so glad that we have developed the habit of spending a few minutes cleaning up and putting things back together before we go to bed in the evening. That has been the game changer to keeping the room tidy. I know it's challenging when you have little ones, but we started by just setting a five minute timer and saying, okay, everyone help tidy up for five minutes. Honestly, you could even start with two minutes if you're trying to get your kids in a new routine of tidying up before bed. But now if I say, let's do a 10 minute tidy, we honestly go to bed with a clean and tidy house and it's such a relief to wake up in the morning without so much mess. I know when my kids were little sometimes it was just so exhausting and I'd be laying down to put the kids to bed also so the mess would just linger for the morning but it's so worth getting it cleaned up the night before. love this little area of our home. It's so cute and cozy. We put a little rug over here and a little chair and it's an area where the kids do like to play Legos but we kind of made it a little book nook. We have some of our regular books that we've decided to keep on the shelves and then the two lower shelves are mostly all children's books. This basket that we have is kind of the ongoing books that either the kids are reading or we're reading together or things that will be coming up. Um, for our our school year. This is what we used to use as our library basket and we may go back to that as the school year kind of gets into the swing. It's nice to keep the library books corralled in one place. But I just love this little spot in the home and that pretty much finishes things up for us. So I will give you some last shots of our clean and tidy living room, kitchen and dining room. It feels so good to have this job done. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you got something in your house clean or if you haven't started yet, Happy cleaning to you, and I will see you next time. Welcome, friends. I'm so glad you've joined me for this one. This is an evening clean with me, and I am deep cleaning my kitchen today. I Everything just needs to be wiped down and reset. So if you need that type of encouragement today, then watch this one. As usual, I had a sink full of cups that needed to be washed. Now I would say a sink full of dishes, but this was over 50%, just cups. So I just quickly hand washed all of these. I did put them in my dishwasher, which was empty, just to dry, and then we put them away when they were dry. But I had to get these out of the way so that we could get to cleaning the rest of the kitchen. Now, I needed to thoroughly wipe down my counters and backsplash. This is one of those move everything off the counter type cleanings. And then my cabinets, I'll show you in a little bit, they were just dirty. Um, you know, little handprints and fingerprints by the handles and the corners, and it was just time to thoroughly wipe everything down. Now I had a few cabinets um, that were scuffed from just use over the years and um, probably over by the stove where, you know, it gets a little greasy or it gets heated up. And so I do have some touch-up paint in my cabinet and 
I went ahead and got those little corners and little just it, it's in the details you know got those things touched up and I can't believe how fresh it looks when I look over at my cabinets instead of those imperfections of the paint being chipped off jumping out at me I just see a fresh clean space and I am so glad I took the time to do that so I hope you'll stick with this video and I hope this gives you the encouragement you need today for cleaning your house, whatever it might be, whether you're doing deep cleaning or light cleaning or just the basics, tidying up. I know there's different kind of things that need to be done each time, but there's a lot of tidying that gets done in our house, but we do make time for the actual cleaning jobs. And one way we do that is through zone cleaning. I first learned about zone cleaning through Fly Lady, as I think a lot of people did, but I've kind of made it into my own system, my own rotation of zone cleaning jobs. If you'd like a video about that, I would love to make just a simple step-by-step um, -step zone cleaning video and um, maybe put some little videos of how that looks throughout my week. So let me know down in the comments if you would be up for a video like that. I would love to let you know what my method is like and maybe that could help you create your own and find out what really works for you. Now, now that the sink is clear, I'm so happy just wiping everything down, getting it nice and shiny, and then I start clearing off the counter. Now, I did have some things that needed to be put away, some appliances, and I usually like to keep most of my appliances tucked away. I do keep my little vintage KitchenAid on the counter and it needs to be wiped down every so often, so we will get to that later in the video. I'm only gonna keep a couple things out on my counter. I'll keep my coffee pot, my KitchenAid, our um, little jars of kind of staple foods. We have oatmeal, rice, pasta, and we've been trying using that. We go through it actually quite fast and I may phase that out if it doesn't work for us long term. But um, I usually also keep a fruit bowl in addition to those things and then usually have a little decorative um, platter or something. Right now I have kind of a baskety um, platter with uh, flowers on my little kitchen peninsula area. So I'll just put everything away. I'm filling up my bottle with nice, fresh, warm water. And today I'm gonna use this Pinaline. It's like pine saw. Um, and I like the components in this for this type of task. I'm really getting in here and spraying everything down. Real quick, before I get too busy with that, let me show you where there are actual fingerprints. My cabinets might look clean from far away, but I wish you could see them in person. They are a little bit uh, messy, a little bit scuffed up. That's just life with eight people using this kitchen and it needs to be done every so often. We need to be able to wipe it down. So I'm just using that spray bottle with warm water and penaline and spraying it down and giving it a good wipe. I'm alternating between using paper towel and a sponge. And I would also use a microfiber rag for this task, but I had just put them in the wash. So I didn't have those available, but this worked just fine for this time. I quickly worked my way down the whole count, uh, the whole kitchen. I really had to focus on the top of every cabinet and then the sunken in places, especially around the bottom corners and the handle. Um, they definitely needed a little extra scrub in some places, but they were coming out so nice and clean. We actually painted these cabinets when we moved into the house and I am so thankful we took the time to spray them. We had the spray gun machine for painting and this is Valspar paint, the paint and primer in one. I was pretty insistent that we got really good paint and then I was super thankful that my husband actually suggested that we spray it. So we had to tape off everything else and he and a friend sprayed the house. Um, the cabinets and all the trim are the same color of gray. Um, it's a Valspar color. I think it's called stone something, smooth stone. I'll go ahead and put it in the description box below. Uh, and then they taped off after that had dried overnight, they taped off the other way and then they painted the rest of the house white in uh, the color gypsum. And I absolutely love how it came out. 
super beautiful and it is held up so well. We've been in the house five years next month and there have only been a couple times that we've had to touch up paint. This is actually the very first time that I'm touching up my kitchen cabinets. So you can see how well they really held up um, from taking the time and effort to um, really get the job done well uh, with a spray gun. We did spray outside and inside of them and I'm really happy with how they came out. I think they're lovely. I like the soft gray color and it's held up over time. After finishing up on this long wall of cabinets, I moved over to the part above the stove and this definitely had the most wear on the paint. I actually gave it a really good initial scrub down. I got a stool so that I could reach the top parts really well and then somehow I lost that video clip. So what you see now is me just coming in with the touch up paint. I'm touching up this whole backer board where some grease has landed and kind of caused the paint to peel. and then. And I am going to get the stool back out and go ahead and touch up the tops of the cabinets and a little bit of the bottom corners. Now I think this is just because grease lands on these, you know, when I'm cooking different things. And I would say I first started to notice the wear probably about a year ago um, that I really needed to come in and touch it up. But it's one of those things that you tend to just put off. And I even keep this small can of touch up paint right over my sink so I have it at the ready. Um, sometimes there's a little nick on a door frame or something. And we have touched up the door frame to my room once before. And then we also added an interior door to my husband's office. And so we had to paint that one. Um, but other than that, our paint has held up so, so well in this house. I'm super thankful for that. I have dealt with cabinets um, that were hand painted before and they did need touch ups more often. Um, so I just think that it's a combination of really quality paint and being able to do the sprayer for application. I know not everyone is able to do that. So at the very least, I would recommend a quality paint and primer for a really good finish on cabinets. Now I quickly cleared off this cabinet. I had our jar of snacks, our um, KitchenAid mixer, and then those kind of bulk bin things that we keep there, and just started to give it a really good wipe down. I sprayed the counter pretty thoroughly and gave the backsplash a good spray, and then just wiping over everything, including those switch plates, made it look and smell so fresh and clean. I cleaned out our snack jar and gave it a good wash, and then I'm gonna take a few minutes to go ahead and wipe down the KitchenAid mixer. Um, you know, I always think that I wipe it down pretty well, but I did find a few little bits of batter um, just kind of splashed in corners here. So it definitely needed a good wipe down. I love this little vintage KitchenAid. Um, it's definitely an older model and the color um, just reminds me of my grandma's kitchen. She had kind of a yellowish stove and I just, um, always associate this kind of color with that um, kind of vintage 70s era. So my friend Grace actually gave me this one. She has a black one in her kitchen and she passed this one on to me. So I just love it. I'm gonna go ahead and return our little rice, almonds, pasta, and oats back to where they have been living. That's been a pretty useful little solution for us. My cousin Brittany gave me those containers when she moved, and I've enjoyed getting some use out of them. I just began wiping down uh, the other side next to the coffee pot, which I had already wiped under. So I just worked the corner all the way up to the coffee pot, and then went ahead and wiped down this backsplash as well. You know, it's uh, interesting having the same material both on the countertop and backsplash. I wasn't sure if I'd like it right away. Um, this was how the kitchen was when we moved in. The only thing we changed was the paint color, but I like it for the ease of cleaning. So I'm pretty happy about that. 
Now I moved to the lower cabinets, which this side gets a lot of traffic. I should have showed you an up close. I don't think you can tell how messy they really were, but we had a few splashes and some watermelon juice that had dripped down the side of the cabinet. Um, that definitely happens from time to time. We've had coffee spills, watermelon juice, whatever just wants to find its way down the side of the cabinet. So we do have to wipe down this area more regularly than I would say we do the top cabinets. So I just went ahead and gave them a good thorough spray and really gave them a scrub where they needed it. I love how fresh this is coming out. I'm not sure if you can really tell on video just what a difference it makes, but if you know from experience, you know, you think your cabinets are okay and then you go ahead and wipe them down you're like, wow, they really were dirty. So that's the experience I'm having right here. I showed you up close a little bit. Maybe you can see um, this was where some of that juice was. And so I did give it a good wash. We also had peanut butter on one of these cabinet doors. So I'm not sure how or when that happened, but I hope it was recent. And we just went ahead and got all of that cleaned up. It's looking so good. Um, makes me so happy to have such a fresh clean kitchen and the kitchen is just smelling so good um, since i just put a little bit of the cleaning solution into the bottle of water it's not overpowering just smells nice and fresh now it is time to give attention to the floors Oh, these floors give me such a hard time. You know, I've been saying since we first moved in that they could really use a nice fresh seal. I think because they're a porous material, you can actually um, strip them and reseal them and they would hold up a lot better. But I absolutely love the look of the terracotta tile. Uh, my house is kind of the Spanish style house from the 1920s. As far as we know, it was built in 1926 and we found out some really fun history about our house. So the tile is not that old by any means, but it definitely adds to the feel of the Spanish style that the home was intended to be. I just went ahead and gave it a good mop. I love this little spin mop. I had a different style before, um, the one that you kind of push up and down with your with the, the actual mop um, pole, but this one has the foot pedal and it's working just fine. I'm pretty happy about how quick it is now to um, run the mop over the floors. So I will give you a final look at how clean and sparkling the kitchen is. It feels so good to have the kitchen nice and fresh, have all that um, paint touched up and just looking at it, it looks bright and new. Um, it's surprising what a little bit of elbow grease can do. So thanks for joining me for this one. And if you haven't so hit subscribe, please do. I hope to see you in a future video. And if you made it this far, I hope you'll hit the like button. I will see you next time. Bye.